Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So today's video is a two-parter and the first part, introduction to set associative caches, I'll post a link for up above. Uh, you can watch that first if you want to know what a set associative cache is. But today what we're going to be talking about is uh, a comparison. This will be a commentary on uh, real hardware from Intel and AMD. We're going to compare the CPU cache specs from uh, some older CPUs all the way up to the current state of the art. Yeah, we're going to be comparing some of the newest Ryzen's and the newest Intel i9's. Yeah, have a bit of a comparison and a chat about the caches of real state of the art hardware. Okay, if you enjoy these videos, please consider becoming a Patreon of the channel. I'll leave a link up above and another one down below in the video description, uh, as it really does help me to make uh, more videos. All right, cheers. Uh, okay, so the first CPU we've got just here, the AMD Phantom 2 810. That's my trusty little Phantom 2. I made a video about that. If you'd like to race your CPU against my uh, little Phantom 2, then uh, I'll leave a link up here somewhere, but there's a, there's a benchmark that we made. Yeah, how many Phantom 2s is your CPU? <laughs> uh, the year up there was 2009, so this is an 11-year-old CPU. Uh, it was an excellent CPU for the day, especially for the, for the price, just, just excellent. The L1 was particularly interesting, so it's very large uh, for an L1, 64 kilobytes per core. Uh, it's two-way set associative, which is a very, very low uh, associativity. And uh, because of that associativity, it was extremely fast. Uh, so the access time there was actually three cycles per access. That's really, really fast. You get a few of these instructions pipelined and you're, you know, you're pretty much running at register speeds. Uh, the L2, uh, once again, really, really nice size for the day. There was uh, 512 kilobytes per core. Uh, it was 16-way set associative and nine cycle access. For this particular chip, because the uh, L1 had such a low set associativity, it actually runs into a lot of cache misses. Yeah, so you end up uh, evicting a lot of the data that you need, but the data goes into the L2. In theory, if you were very, very careful to only use the L1, I'm pretty sure you could make this absolutely fly. All right, four megabytes, 64 way set associative, uh, 30 to 40 cycles. The L3 there, four megabytes. Uh, so that's shared among all the cores. You pretty much see that the L3s are always shared. Yeah, just the way things work. Uh, all right, so the Intel i7-2600K, the famous uh, Sandy Bridge. What a chip. This is from uh, 2011, the first chip to have uh, AVX instructions. L1 contains uh, 32 kilobytes per core, eight-way set associative, and four cycle access time. That's a very decent L1. Yeah, so something like this uh, Sandy Bridge just here, generally speaking, thrashes the little AMD above it. And the reason that it does is uh, the L1 is smaller, but the set associativity here being eight-way rather than two-way actually leads to a whole lot less cache misses. Uh, the L2, 256 kilobytes, eight-way set associative and 11 cycles for access there. And the L3 of the Sandy Bridge was eight megabytes, 16 way, 25 cycles. It's a decent chip, the, uh, the Sandy Bridge. A lot of people remember it fondly. I think it was uh, a, bit of a bit of a golden era for, uh, for our Intel chips. Uh, all right, so the AMD FX8150. Now this is a bulldozer chip. So bulldozer chips actually copped a heap of, uh, of rubbish from the critics and the um, benchmarks back in the day when they were released. Uh, a lot of people were expressing their disappointment at the new uh, architecture. Uh, AMD actually had um, a marketing campaign too where they were saying that the cores were, were actually double and uh, they were sued for that, for false advertising. Uh, so they got sued and they ended up paying something like $12 million, I think, for uh, false advertising. I think it is interesting. So exactly what does define a core? So AMD was saying that they had an eight core bulldozer. And I can see why they would try and market that. They had uh, eight 16 kilobytes L1s. Yeah, four way set associative and three cycles each. So that is a fast uh, L1. And each of these cores, we'll put them in inverted commas because we don't know if they're actually cores or not. Uh, each of these cores has its own L1. Then we get down to the L2 and we see that there's four by two megabytes. Yeah, 16 way set associative and 21 cycles access time. Uh, the L3 size there, eight megabytes, 64 way set associative and 64 cycle access. Yeah, so it's not a fast L3, but it's a decent size. Okay, so the next chip is actually the chip in the uh, laptop that I'm recording this video with. So this is a mobile processor. Uh, this is the Intel i7-8750 from 2018. Uh, it's got six cores, 
and it's got 32 kilobytes per core in its L1, eight-way set associative and four cycle access time. Then we've got uh, L2s, 256 kilobytes per core, four-way set associative and 12 cycles access time. Uh, and a nine megabyte, 12 way set associative 42 cycle L3. So this is a mobile chip and uh, it's a pretty decent chip really. Uh, seems to get pretty much everything done. It's a little bit irritating that it's got six cores rather than a power of two, but I mean, that's just nitpicking really, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I wish it had eight. Don't we all wish our CPU had two more cores? <laughs> all right, the next one, this is 2017. Uh, I think the whole world was a little bit stunned by this. Uh, Ryzen came out. Yeah, the Threadripper. So this is the 1950X. Uh, I remember reading the core counts and thinking there's no way that they could uh, feed this monster. Uh, you'd need an absolutely amazing uh, cache hierarchy. Little did I know they had one. <laughs> uh, this is how you feed a 16 core Ryzen Threadripper 1950X. 32 kilobytes, eight-way set associative L1s with four to eight cycles. So one of the interesting things about the Ryzen's is that they seem to have different access times in their L1s based on whether you're accessing integers or floating points. Uh, anyway, it's got a gigantic 512 kilobytes per core of uh, L2. That's eight-way set associative and 12 cycle access. It's a quick access time and that's a big cache. And then at the end, they have four eight megabyte 16 way 40 cycle L3s. Interesting that the L3s aren't completely shared between the cores. Uh, all right, so 2019, this was, I think this was November 2019. We had an interesting situation where AMD was just about to release a new generation of Ryzen's and Intel the day before the release uh, just jumped out and released their own new CPU line. So they call these the Intel i9-10980XE. Uh, okay, so this chip cost 979 of your best Yankee dollars when it was launched. So for one thing, it's an 18 core, which is fantastic. Uh, it's got 32 kilobytes per core, uh, eight-way set associative and four cycles. Uh, it's also got 18 times one megabyte L2s. So you start to see that the L2s are really starting to get substantial. 16-way set associative and the access time for those is 14 cycles. And then the L3 was a little bit strange. Um, it was something like, uh, yeah, it's such and such megabytes per core. And you times that number by 18, you actually end up with 24.75 megabytes of L3. It's 11-way set associative. I have no idea why. <laughs> just trying something different, I guess. Uh, they've got to defend themselves from these Ryzen, so I think they're uh, just trying whatever they can. Uh, 50 to 70 cycle access time. So, yeah, uh, it's a good chip. Yeah, it's a really, really good chip. It also had uh, AVX 512, so 512-bit registers. Hopefully, in the upcoming Ryzen's, we can get AVX 512 as well, and then that'll be absolutely amazing. Okay, then in 2019, we got a new Threadripper. Uh, okay, so we've got here a Ryzen Threadripper 3960X from 2019, uh, but this new Threadripper has 24 cores, so it's an absolute and utter monster. <laughs> Each one of those four cores has a 32 kilobyte L1. It's eight-way set associative and four to seven cycles. Uh, it's got 24, 512 kilobytes, eight-way set associative and 12 cycle L2 caches. And then the L3 size is just off the charts. I mean, this is just getting crazy. It was 128 megabytes. What on earth? Uh, so the final one I put on here, just because I think the stats of it are a complete joke. I mean, this is just crazy. Uh, this is the Threadripper 3990X. Uh, this is the silliest CPU I was able to find for sale, and uh, it costs as much as three houses. <laughs> now, this is the Ryzen Threadripper 3990X. Uh, Alright, so it's a 64-core monster. I mean, even that's just a little bit silly, but it's got 32 kilobytes of L1 per core, eight-way set associative, and four to seven cycles. So 64, 512K uh, L2s. 8-way set associative and 12 cycles. The L3 is, a, is 256 megabytes. So look at that. 16-way set associative and 39 cycle access time. Uh, that's amazing. That's enough to store a, a Linux operating system, the whole thing, while it's running in your L3. Uh, it's going to absolutely fly. Uh, but that's how you feed a 64-core Threadripper monster. 
Yeah, so amazing stuff. That's uh, pretty much the latest at the moment. I can't wait to see the uh, specs of the new Ryzen's when they come out. The uh, next generation is coming out very soon. I think they're expected uh, sometime during the end of 2020. It should be very exciting stuff. Also really interested to see what uh, Intel comes up with to defend themselves against this uh, Ryzen threat. Uh, these Ryzen's are absolutely amazing CPUs. I will say that the uh, Intel's are very good CPUs as well. And uh, I hope, I hope that there's uh, some really good competition coming. Yeah, give us some, uh, give us some big core counts, Intel. Give us some big caches to feed the cores and uh, you should be laughing, mates. Yeah, best of luck to them. So, Okay, and that, my friends, is uh, Set Associative Caches. Yeah, we've had a bit of an introduction there, and uh, we've also compared some, uh, some real specs from real hardware. It's really fascinating stuff. So not only is there a battle going on in instruction sets, like uh, AMD will release XOP, and then Intel will release uh, AVX512, these two giants are also competing with cache sizes and speeds. It's absolutely extraordinary, the things that are happening. Um, yeah, anyway, that's about all that I wanted to say. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Sleep, my pretty darling, do not cry, and I will sing a lullaby.